so why is it? Why? How come some days you can go out and the whole thing just seems like child's play and anybody can do it and it's no big deal and it's absolutely easy and everything is great. And then other days it's like you know, pulling your own teeth. Uh, it's a mental thing. Uh, and this is this is a good example of why you should never be cocky on the on the days that you're playing good. There's people watching you and thinking, how's he, how's he making this look so easy? Why am I struggling so hard? So if you get cocky about it and just become a dick, you know, just this arrogant dude, like, and thinking you're, you know, you're God's gift to pull them all in, and you're making other people feel bad about themselves because they're thinking, So be grateful on those days when you are playing good and you'll get more of, of, of that. You'll play better more often and you'll play bad less often. If you go about it with the right attitude. So realize that you can struggle too and it can all be taken away from you. And you can go back to just you know, pulling your own teeth. So. Try to keep it in mind, I know it's hard, because you feel like you, know, you deserve to be confident and you worked your ass off for it, here you are. Yeah, but there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. So, and it's a fine line, it can be, and, and it, it all comes out in your words. So be careful with your words. Here you see me looking for the seven ball target and the seven ball line and also the four ball line and I'll get back to that in a minute. First I want to talk about this first shot I'm taking. This situation comes up all the time with this one and this two ball and going down to the bottom rail and spinning the cue ball off that right hand side rail to get back right on the two ball. And many, many years ago, way back in the 1920s, I remember setting this shot up like a thousand times and just doing it over and over and over again. And so finally, I knew exactly what kind of stroke I needed to play and, and where to hit the cue ball and the speed of the stroke and all that kind of stuff. And so I just, I just finally, one day, I just hit it and mastered it and, and you know, never missed it again. At least not that I can remember. But I call it the lazy boy drill because you don't have to go anywhere when you're done doing it. You don't have to go hunt balls all over the table and set balls back up and do that. You just reach into the pocket and pull out, you know, the one ball and you set the cue ball back up where you want it. But um, let's go ahead and graph this so I can show you exactly what's going on here. This is the basic setup, and you, and you could say, well, just stop the cue ball and just shoot the long shot down here on the two ball. Um, but often that's impossible because there's a ball blocking that path or, or whatever the reason is. And um, so this, while it looks really simple to go two rails and back on the two, it's not as easy as it looks. It's very deceiving, and it takes a real touch to do it right. And people try it all the time, and they go way long back up table and they get themselves in trouble. So again guys, this is a really good shot to uh, practice and, and I'm gonna show you the gist of it right here. I used to practice mostly trying to get straight behind that two ball and on that rail, of course, without scratching and not to go long and just hit it perfect like 10 or 20 times in a row before I moved on and started moving that two ball around and taking the same shot two rails back on the two ball but with the two ball in different locations and then I would stick to that shot until I started nailing it a whole lot of times in a row and then I would just keep on moving that two ball around and it really just dials in your stroke and it also dials in the speed of the table and it takes a touch and a follow through because you're spinning that cue ball both off the first rail and the second rail. So if, if we look at the natural angle coming off the one ball, it's like right here, and it's just going to go way back up table. So the draw that you're putting on the cue ball widens that angle off the one ball to that first rail. 
and it's spinning counterclockwise, so it's going to spin the cue ball into that second round. But that's the danger part when it hits that second round because it naturally wants to widen the angle off that second round. And that's where the touch comes in. You'll see if you set this up, it's not as easy as it looks. Let's take another look at the table and find all nine lines and the two targets for the table. So we need a, a bit of an angle on this three ball if we're going to shoot it down there in this corner and get on the four ball. So we're leaving the cue ball right about here for the two ball to give us an angle for the three. And then we're going to try to get to right about here on this four ball to take care of the five, six, and seven. Now this six ball line is going to change as it gets banged around a couple times. So got to pay that a little bit of mind. Yeah, as you can see, I came up way high on the two ball and didn't get exactly where I needed to be. So now I need to go back and forth across the table to get a good shot on the three ball. And it's going to be hard to get right on that three to be able to get on the four. This is the way it's been going lately. I'm so far out of stroke because of, you know, all the coronavirus stuff. And I'm just kind of suffering through it and just trying to push myself through it and that. Uh, Hopefully I'll start playing more and get back in stroke, but right now it's just, you know, it's just kind of a grind just to get through a rack. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of right hand English on this two ball to avoid hitting that seven ball. So we're going to settle for a longer shot on the three than I want it. Anyway, let's go ahead and shoot the two ball and see how this goes. Yeah. You know, the five balls makeable from pretty much anywhere in the center of the table, so I don't have to worry about the shape I get off this four ball on the five. Um, so I'm just going to cinch to this three ball and just go to that left hand side rail and bounce out a little bit for a little bit of a difficult shot on the four ball. But I'm not really worried about it because the eight ball, or the six ball is right there next to it, and that's that's going to stop the cue ball. Although the six ball is going to get knocked up or down the table a little bit, it shouldn't be a big deal. You'll see when I shoot this four ball into the pocket, it just barely skims the five ball and puts that five almost on that top rail, the short rail, to a really difficult angle on, on a five ball shot. But I'm going to show you the trick in, in making that crazy shot as soon as we get done shooting this four ball. So let's go ahead and roll it. Keep from scratching. As you can see, the six ball got pushed down the table a little bit, and that changed the aiming point of the six, but it's about to get hit again. And most of, these, most of the people that watch my videos are advanced players, so they already know this shot, but for the people that don't know this shot, um, you don't have to play it safe here. I'm going to show you how to make this shot every single time. We're going to get a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. You're putting a ton of straight left hand English on this and you're aiming to miss the five ball just by a hair and you're hitting that top rail first. When it comes off the top rail and because of the left hand English, it's going to force the cue ball this way. And the result is the cue ball hits the five at the exact point it needs to hit it and the five ball goes in the pocket, of course. The problem with it is that cue ball is going to ricochet off the five ball and it's headed straight at the six ball. So we're kind of taking our chances on where that six ball is going, but hopefully we'll have a decent shot and we'll resume this game. You still have to pull a pain, huh? 
if you want. It worked out well, and, and note how the cue ball's a little bit to the right side of that six ball line, and that's good so we can stun it out for a shot on the seven. But we don't want to get exactly straight in on that seven ball, because if, if you follow that seven ball line back to the eight ball shot, you can see we're a little too close for comfort right there. We don't want to be that close to our work. So we want to be a little bit to the right hand side, just a hair, to the right hand side of the seven ball line so we can arch the cue ball back when we draw it back and extend that angle coming back to the eight ball. I extended it a little bit more than I wanted to and came a little too close to scratching, but it, it all worked out in the end and you'll see that when we do the loop back. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you and I'll be back soon with more videos. dictates life and there's there's things to learn when everything's going great and there's things to learn when everything's going bad so they don't hand them on a day you just can't seem to buy a ball um, how much sleep did you get the night before uh, what did you eat uh, what was going on in your personal life uh, everything that happened to you on the, you know because it's a mental issue and you might have to dig a little bit deep and say oh yeah I was stressed out last night because of this or that so my nerves are a little bit rattled and my confidence is down because you know whatever and it's the same way with days that you played good everything lined up and you bounced and your, your head is right Everything's going right. How much sleep did you get the night before? What did you eat? Uh, you know, what 
was going on in your life and try to repeat those patterns of positivity of every, you know, every day of your life. Yeah, stay positive. Think and grow rich.